I realize that I am the only thing standing between you and the break, so I will keep that in mind, and I think my presentation will be somewhat short. I'd like to donate any extra time that I've left on the clock to the Q&A, because I know there will probably be a ton of questions um, for, for all of the panelists. Um, a quick show of hands, quick straw poll. How many of you are from Chicago or from the Midwest and have chosen to stick around? A lot. Okay. How many of you that hadn't raised your hand are from the East Coast and have come to Chicago? How many of you are from the West Coast? Uh, that's more typical. So the West Coast tends to be the, the harder coast to recruit from, um, but we hope that you all decide to stay here. Um, just a, a couple words about um, DOS, um, my current employer. So um, as Jeff said, we're fast-growing media and branded content company. So we publish, we have writers and editors and video talent that produces compelling talent, uh, sorry, compelling um, content for our websites, dose.com and omgfacts.com. We also have a revenue and sales team that partners with agencies, advertisers, brands directly to uh, develop content for their ad campaigns. And then we have proprietary technology that allows us to help through our algorithms and our data products to help brands understand which of a variety of different campaigns are, are gonna resonate best with a certain target audience. So it saves them time and money and uh, hopefully makes the campaign more effective. So that's a bit about um, Dose. We're still somewhat under the radar because the brand itself is, the company is about five years old, but the brand is a little over a year old. So we're changing that. Okay, so I wanted to talk about this. It's a topic that I am passionate about um, as a diehard Chicagoan myself and as someone who's recruited for a number of companies over a number of years um, to Chicago. I've always worked for companies that are headquartered here. Um, so let me ask you, do you feel that there is a talent drain going to the coast or difficulty recruiting talent to Chicago from the coast or from other locations? How many, how many experience that or feel that that's the case? How many have felt in your own experience that it's gotten easier more recently to attract talent to Chicago? Only three people. <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, I think that it still is a problem, although I think it's getting easier. And here are some of the reasons that I would cite as, as reasons why it's Chicago still struggles a bit with attracting talent. <clears throat> we are competing not just in a national economy um, and, a, and a very difficult um, talent economy, but it is now becoming an increasingly global economy, a very dynamic global economy. So that doesn't make it any easier when we're now competing with cities like London or Tokyo or Hong Kong. Um, there are also these thriving tech hubs that are being established in other locations outside of the coast. So whether it's Boston, Austin, I just had five friends move to Austin in the last year alone. Um, Raleigh Durham for healthcare, Atlanta for healthcare. So, so that's also another dynamic that's happening. Um, there is evidence that shows that in general, or on average, the salaries that we're paying, especially for tech or executive talent in the Midwest or in Chicago, is not what someone can earn, especially in the Bay Area or in New York. Now, we know that we have cost of living differentials and that works in our favor, but I have found in my experience that there's still a lot of focus on just the pay itself. Um, perceived horsepower bias. By that I mean, and I don't believe this, but I do believe that it's out there that, you know, New York's the center of the universe or you need to be in the Bay Area if you're going to be successful at tech. And there's just this bias that, you know, Chicago is just not quite 
um, where the other larger cities are. Um, I think there's also a sense that in Chicago, we are not the risk takers that you might find in these other locations, and that sometimes works against us. Uh, similar to that, this notion that there are greener pastures that await on the coasts. Uh, another factor, I think, we, we don't really have a calling card industry here, and by that I mean if you look at some of the other industries, if you're going to be in government, you're pretty much going to need to be in D.C., unless it's local government. If you want to be a player in big finance, you're probably going to consider New York as your home. Entertainment, Los Angeles, tech, of course, the Bay Area, Houston for energy. So we don't really have an industry where people are saying, I've, I've got to be in Chicago, it's where it's happening, and therefore we're driving um, talent, whether someone wants to live here or not. Um, it's because of the, um, the depth of a certain industry. Uh, abundance of investors, investments elsewhere, of course, Bay Area, New York. Um, I'd be curious to, to talk to Maura about her stats, but in general what I've found through my research is that we are behind not only San Francisco and the Bay Area and New York, but Los Angeles, Boston, Seattle, San Diego, Austin, and D.C. Um, in terms of just the abundance of venture capital and other investment, which certainly does not help, especially if you buy into the fact that investors are tired of getting on a plane to visit their portfolio companies, they would like you down the street if possible, and therefore there is a pull towards them. Here's um, a map of, from late last year of the unicorns, so private, not public, but private companies that are valued at a billion dollars or more, and you can pretty much see that, yes, indeed, the Bay Area has a plethora of them, and we have a couple, um, but that's it. Um, so you can, see, you can see what's happening in the coast. We need a huge, big win. We need a few of them, ideally, but we need an Airbnb. We need an Uber. I think that would do um, a lot of good for our um, talent economy. Okay, so that's... I don't know if you agree with me or not, but those are some of the dynamics that I think have kept us from winning in a bigger way. The good news is that there are increasing numbers of companies that are merging or IPOing successfully here in Chicago, and that is spawning more and more startups that have a chance of doing the same thing successfully and staying in Chicago. Um, it's key for us to be able to attract super talented, super senior CEOs and leaders. So just one example, I don't know if you know Sam Yegan, he's a very successful entrepreneur. He's been out in the Bay Area or out in California. Among other things, he founded OkCupid, which he then sold to Match.com. And after that happened, he promptly came back to Chicago and said, now I want to stay here and I'm not going anywhere else. And um, he's now started Shop Runner, which is a play on Amazon Prime, and he's basing it here, which is great. We need a lot of those examples, people who are coming back or who realize what a great place Chicago is to, to uh, house their companies. Um, I mentioned that we don't have the car calling card industries, but we do have a great diversity of industries, which is a very healthy thing. We're not dependent on any one economy like Houston would be with oil and energy and we know what we do well. So I'd like to talk a little bit about what are some of the things that we can do as a community first, as a city or a community, um, come together and think about um, how we can win even in a bigger way in terms of attracting talent back to or to Chicago. Um, we need an ecosystem, a true ecosystem that is cooperative and that comes together. So by that I mean, let's figure out ways where we can leverage organizations like the ITA or Built in Chicago or 1871 to partner with companies. 
our universities as well. Let's figure out a way to come together and have relationships with West Coast and East Coast universities. We talk about how lucky we are to have great education here in Chicago, which we end up losing to the coast, but let's reverse that. Let's, let's figure out how we can have a bigger presence as a city at Berkeley or at Stanford or at MIT. Um, let's think about talent as a constant pipeline. And we've heard from, we've already heard some great ideas about how to brand and how to continue to um, build out a network nationally, um, but let's not leave it to transactional recruiting. Um, let's look at education in a different way, and this might be a little too radical, but I'm talking about considering even the European system where companies are engaging with students at a very young age, um, pre-college, even sometimes pre-high school, um, in terms of a medieval concept called you know, apprenticeships. And by that, they're hooking them in to their organizations and to employment very, very early on. Now, I'm not sure that our educational system or, or our companies are are ready to do that, but is there a modified version of some of those models that we could think about? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Howard um, Tolman and his idea and concept of just going down to Champaign and bringing students up to Chicago for a semester, um, just so that they can realize what a great city it is, if they don't already know that, and engage with potential employers so that we can hook them even before they graduate and not lose as many of them to the coasts. <coughs> Continue to push the city, the city itself, to attract and relocate company headquarters to Chicago. I'm not talking about this nice recent dynamic of companies moving from the suburbs to the city, but I'm talking about companies that are based elsewhere. Did anyone know that Duracell relocated its headquarters to Chicago last year from, I think it was Connecticut? And they came and they brought no one with them. So they had to build out an entire executive and leadership team and then the rest of the organization. Um, those are huge wins for the city and it just means that we're gonna naturally need to recruit um, from a national talent pool. Sphera, Affinitive, I mentioned those. You may not have heard of them. They're companies that have recently started up. They're $100 million startup companies that spun off from somewhere else and now, again, are needing to build out their entire executive and management team. So those are all you know, great ways for us to add to the local economy and um, opportunities for us to attract local and national talent. Um, let's try to see if we can embrace a few calling cards within our diverse in industry. I spent a few years in the proprietary trading industry and I thought that that was really going to happen here, and I think it has, but I think we missed an opportunity to um, headquarter more of those prop trading firms right here in Chicago. Let's figure out how to take 1871 to an even bigger level in terms of developing more high-powered entrepreneur and mentorship opportunities so that when we have entrepreneurs, we're not frustrating them and having them leave for the coast because they feel that they have guidance, mentorship, as well as funding that they can access locally. And for God's sake, let's hold on to our best people. I mean, if, if, if you can train your managers and your leaders to be able to make sure you retain your best people, then you're obviously not even going to need to worry about how you're going to recruit the next person. In terms of some very specific recruitment-related ideas, those were kind of more big picture community initiatives. Um, I think we all need to make sure that our pay is in alignment, um, especially from an equity perspective. If you have a chance to influence your leadership, your CEO, in terms of offering equity, even small amounts, to every employee, if you're small enough, um, please take advantage of that because we can't compete with the Bay Area when it comes to equity pay. Let's fight hard to keep university talent here. Fewer than half of U of I engineering grads remain in Illinois. 15% of them go to California on average. We shouldn't let that happen. Consider remote workers as a way to hook someone into your company. If you're able to have, say, a San Francisco or an LA-based engineer 
work remotely, um, then at least you're going to be in a position to possibly eventually have them relocate to Chicago, which is what we ultimately want because then that feeds our local economy. Keep selling the Chicago lifestyle. I've done it for years. It's awesome. Um, people don't realize that you can actually buy a house in the city, something that you really can't do in Manhattan, um, unless you're super, super rich. Um, target candidates with Chicago or Midwestern roots, it's often much easier to bring someone back, especially as they get older, the grandparents are here, they want to see the grandchildren more often. You can, you can zone in on those kinds of candidates and probably be more successful than someone who spent their entire life and education, say, on the West Coast. Don't forget the spouse cell. I'm sure many of you have your own stories about this, but I have learned that I need to engage the spouse or figure out where her or his head is um, earlier because ultimately I've seen things fall apart at the very, very last minute only because the spouse has gotten cold feet. And as I said before, for God's sakes, hold on to your best people and then you won't have to worry about recruiting from anywhere else.